11. Yes. <sighs> Thank heavens. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> Three, two, one. That's his idea of a, of a countdown. Three, two, one. Mm-hmm. So I have to sort of make sure I'm ready and I'm never completely ready. How is everybody today? We're, um, I'm having issues with my Facebook app on my iPad. It keeps crashing, so I can't see the chat. So Renee's going to have to keep you updated. Keep me updated on what what you guys are saying and what kind of questions you might have. We have um, a lot of fun coming up for you today. As soon as he turns volume down on his computer, <laughs> we're good. Um, I've cut, I haven't painted a skull or designed anything with a skull in a very long time, and. Um, I got playing with a couple of older patterns because I really, really like some of the older ones, but they needed to be updated. Some of the color palettes are a little out of, you know, just, yeah. So I thought I'd go digging through some of them and I came up with this one, which is the Sweet Treat Plate. Um, I really like this one because it's a creepy little skull turned into a cupcake. He's just weird and wonderful. And this is the original piece right here. Um, it's a bit battered because it's been around uh, a few trade shows over the years. And um, the more I looked at it, the more I thought it needed a serious update. So I opened up the pattern. Color palette was okay, but I decided to update the cherries and some of the line drawings. And so that's what I did. I left the original pattern as is. I just incorporated the new line drawings so that you can use those to update. There's a few things about this guy that I'm not keen on. I find him a little creepy. Er than I ordinarily like. So I made some subtle changes to him, changed up his eyes a little bit, added, made him a little more, I don't know, cute. <laughs> cute? So a little cute. I don't know. Anyway, um, one thing led to another. I ended up doing uh, a whole bunch of doodles and designed a whole bunch of stuff with skulls because I kind of got carried away, which is not uncommon. Um, but having said that, I um, I came up with, skull ice cream <laughs> i know you're probably thinking that's woman is nuts but and you wouldn't be wrong but um i thought this would be fun so there are a couple of new printables up i just put them up this morning uh there's a couple of new printables up on the website that have uh ice cream cones and lollipops uh, done in the same style and so here's the printable for the uh, ice cream cones and lollipops and then I couldn't seem to get stopped so there's two <laughs> two sheets um they're se- posted separately so you can go and download those off of the website they're in the free print printable section my mouth isn't working today um and then I have been busy designing so that light is bright it is bright um, so I've been busy designing and I came up with a couple of new designs for um, for the website as well. And uh, don't ask me why, but I already got Christmas on the brain. So I um, it must be the Christmas in July thing that has me thinking about Christmas anyway. Uh, so I have a couple of new Christmas designs coming up as well. And uh, as for Christmas in July... <laughs> If you have ordered your pattern for the uh, Artfully Connected class, let me tell you a couple of things about it. First of all, the class itself is free. You just have to go to the Artfully Connected website and register for whichever class you want to take because there's a whole bunch of them through the month of July. Mine is on the 21st of July, (laughs) and uh, it's a fun one. The pattern is available on the website as an e-packet, but the class itself is free. I also have a kit available. So it has the surface, the stencils, plus the printed pattern in it as well. That's available on the website. Some of you have already purchased your pattern. If you've noticed that the line drawing was missing, please send me off a message uh, through the message service on my website. Just go to the front page of the website, little speech bubble in the lower right hand corner. Fire me off a message and let me know that you were missing the line drawing and we will take care of getting it to you. Um, we had a problem with the file and it uploaded um, incorrectly and there was a few things missing from it. So if you're missing the line drawings, just let me know. We'll be more than happy to send you um, a revised copy of that e-packet. And we did get all of the surfaces and the stencils in uh, yesterday. So if you are waiting on your kit, those will be shipped out on Monday morning. 
Um, what else? Your shout out. My shout out today. Oh, yes. I got <laughs> happy mail. Happy mail and shout out I got at a, the same time. I Yeah. I was so excited about this. Um, one of my favorite websites that I haunt on a regular basis is uh, scrapbook.com. Don't know why. Not a scrapbooker, but they have some of the coolest gadgets, doodads, just the most awesome stamps. So I am constantly on their website. I'm always finding something that I can play with. Um, but I was looking for yet another thing to fulfill my obsession with postage stamps. And I found this. This is washi tape. And uh, it actually is individual stamps. And they stick. They're all, it's wonderful. And these ones are botanical. They have all sorts of flowers and butterflies and whatnot on them. And then these ones are multicolored. Same idea. But then, then I found this. This stuff is, a, this is a giant washi tape. It's like four and a half inches wide. Great big wide honking washi tape. Beautiful patterns, beautiful designs. This one is all labels. There's six rolls in this one of the little one inch. I loved this. But then I found this. This, it's like that Tim Holtz uh, collage paper that I am so in love with. Uh, except this one is sticky. So it sticks to stuff. It's so tape. It's tape. It's flipping awesome. So it, this is just a wooden surface with washi tape on it. And then I shaded around the outside edges. It is just flipping amazing. And it works just like the collage paper with the only difference being is this is tape. It sticks to the surface. You don't have to go and put a whole bunch of stuff on it. I painted over top of it. I put matte medium over top of it amazing worked like a hot damn i just <laughs> loved this stuff they're waiting for the but wait there's more oh my god like i just but you know what the more is that there's so many really cool designs i fell in love with this one it's got butterflies and just to make things even better on there's an artist palette oh well, there you on go it. it's just so yes so my shout out for the week is to 49 and market.com absolutely phenomenal washi tapes just beautiful so if you're into doing uh journaling if you do ornaments and you want to do really fast backgrounds hello just amazing amazing stuff so go and check them out at 49 4 9 and market.com absolutely phenomenal products i cannot wait to play with these i have so many ideas my brain is leaking so that is both my shout out for the week at 49 and market because their designs are just beautiful but also my happy mail because it was awesome i loved it <laughs> i get very excited about stuff in case you hadn't noticed <laughs> the link is in the description yep it is so if you go down scroll down in the description it'll say shout out of the week the link should be right beside it Nice. You made me a cup of tea. I did. Mm, I made, made coffee. Cup. You made a good <laughs> cup of tea, too. Thank you. You're welcome. So today we're going to paint skulls. I know not everybody loves skulls, but I'm kind of obsessed with them. I mean, I'm... <laughs> I'm sculled out today. I have sugar skull necklaces, rings, bracelets. I even found my, my little collection of liquor bottles and shot glasses. <laughs> Grab them. They can't see them from there. I have a little collection of, of uh, sugar skull shot glasses. And this one is uh, that was tequila. Vodka. Oh, it was tequila. Yeah, this one's tequila. Little is there still skull. tequila in there? No. No? It's gone. <laughs> and then this one, of course, was a crystal skull. Vodka. Vodka. Was. Was. Yeah. <laughs> Keyword was. Was. <laughs> So I have my little skull. And Renee's got a great big skull sitting on his desk, holds all the pens. So, yeah, I'm kind of obsessed with skulls. Poor Yorick. <laughs> I knew him well. <laughs> yeah, poor Yorick. He didn't like to shave. I can't wait for Halloween and Michael's. I wish there was a Hobby Lobby closer. Because um, I, I love all of that creepy <laughs> Halloween stuff that they get in. I just, oh. Yeah, I kind of... Not because I'm particularly in love with Halloween, but just... <laughs> Surely you jest. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, and the other happy thing this week, uh, Michael's had a 60% off sale this week on all of their canvas. <gasps> you should look at them when you say I that. know. I got so excited. <laughs> Hence the reason I stocked up on canvas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yes, I did. I haven't been here in a while. I know you were away for working for a week. <laughs> I have a massive hey, that art pie. gallery is looking better and better. Yeah. So. I can't wait for September now. <laughs> now that you know there's some... Now that I know what's coming, I'm really excited. Uh, complete works of Winston Churchill <sighs> and uh, a couple of Matisse paintings that are going to yeah. be going up. I can't wait. I'm really excited to see the Winston Churchill exhibit that. There was another British artist. Um, there's a painting. Uh, it was a painting off of a veranda mm -hmm. overlooking something. Oh, yeah. And there, there's another painter in within the painting. Within the painting, yeah. which is Winston Churchill. Yeah. And it's when he was painting the two trees. Nice. So... It's exciting. I, I got to see him already because... Yeah, well, he works at the art gallery. <laughs> I so, get all, all the security clearances and stuff. Yeah, and... he does security at, at the <laughs> art gallery. So, um, yeah, I, I can't I, I can get firsthand info on what's coming up at the gallery, which is kind of cool. All I'm allowed to show her is uh, the names. Just the names. He's not, not allowed where to show they me are, the pictures. Not what they're or... doing. <laughs> so... Yeah, he's just torturing me. That's all. <laughs> that's, I think that's the part that he enjoys the most. Because <laughs> she has to wait till September. I have to wait till September. <laughs> I get to that's all the That's cruel and unusual punishment. Well, you can go to on not today, tomorrow, the next day. Yeah, you can go I can anytime. go to the gallery whenever I want. But, but you're, you're only going to see maybe ten percent of what they have. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Well, um, we've covered my shout out for the week. We covered happy mail, covered my foolishness, my goofiness. We talked about skulls. We talked about <laughs> skulls. Um, <laughs> Anything else? That's what I was just trying to think. Uh, there's a, a couple of people that posted finished pieces uh, this week on Facebook. Yeah. And I mean, I'm always blown away by the talent that I see amongst all these painters and artists and they're flipping amazing um but what i find unique is that every once in a while their husbands get in on the act really yes and yeah. one lovely lady posted a piece that she painted from one of my it's an older pattern it was um sunny sunflowers it's a welcome sign and she did a beautiful job of it absolutely beautiful job of it and then her husband created the wreath to go around it to hang on the door absolutely spectacular nice. you don't spectacular. know who that was do you you know what i wrote it down because my brain doesn't function the way it's supposed to where'd you write it down i think it's on one of my yellow yeah, notes give me one second <laughs> i'm terrible my memory is just some days it's so bad i could plan my own surprise party <laughs> it's terrible where is it Skullbook? Yellow yeah that's the one <laughs> Because I just so I I wrote it down because I wanted to um yeah it's to Donna and Rich Pul Pul Putz Pultz Putzel Pultz yeah for Donna and Rich uh, they said that they watched it every Saturday you have to check it out so I mean go and have a look at Donna's page I think she posted it on on Toll Painters Unite absolutely gorgeous and then her husband did this floral thing around it is just spectacular so i just wanted to point that out one and to uh thank both don and rich for watching and That's for sending me the pictures i really appreciate that you shared that with me that was really really great i recognize that name why do i recognize that name i don't know uh kiko yumada oh kiko yes yeah kiko. What a sweetheart She's, a she's doll. in BC, isn't she? No, she's in California. California. I thought you were Canadian for a second. No. She's Why does wonderful. that name sound familiar? Because Keiko is always participating in all sorts of things. Oh. Yeah, she's a sweet lady. Really sweet lady. Oh, there's Jessica. There's Linda, of course. Linda. And Patrick. Patrick Penafus posted 
um, in the group yesterday and on Toll Painters Unite that he painted the uh, hot chocolate sign. Oh, right on. Yes, hot chocolate served here. Did a beautiful job on it. He's not keen on painting on canvas. (laughs) (laughs) He discovered, but a great job. The piece looks fantastic. Um, I was going to say about canvas, which was why I mentioned that canvas was on sale at Michael's this week at 60% off. Um, The higher the grade of canvas, you get that finer tooth. The more expensive the canvas is, the higher the quality of the canvas, the easier it is to paint on because the tooth of the canvas is much finer. Ah. So if you find that your canvas is really coarse for certain things, take a step up and buy the next level up and you'll find that you'll have an easier time with it because of that. (laughs) Hide your own Easter eggs. I could hide my own Easter eggs. Yep. (laughs) Plan my own surprise party. Yep. Nope. That's... uh, I brain dead for the last couple of weeks (laughs) so all right guys i think you think we've had enough i do think from time to time surprise surprise i gotta move this camera over he's gonna move the down shot yeah and that button there you go i'm down okay so i'm this Coming back to the 49 and Market, um, if you go to their website, 49andmarket.com, um, it is a wholesale site, so you can't really purchase from there, but you can have a look and see what they have. But the um, if you're looking to buy their products, they're available on scrapbook.com. So that was where I was going with that. But um, I just love how this, and this is a tape. Doesn't that look great? It's just an absolutely, and so smooth. It's just a lovely, lovely surface. And then once I had it adhered to the surface, I just floated a little asphaltum around the edges. I I know you're shocked. (laughs) And then um, I put a coat of matte medium over top of it. Now, it did buckle a little bit, but then it disappeared as soon as it was dry. But look at that. Just beautiful. And it took two seconds to put it on there because it's tape. I thought it was (laughs) fabulous. And then I mean, these are the, the stamps that I was talking about. They come in a roll, like so, and they're individual stamps. So they just tear off or you can cut them off. And they have all these beautiful designs. Oh, we, so, we, we, we did forget something that we normally cover in our intro. What's that? Uh, what's for dinner? What's for dinner tonight? We are having uh, steak and salmon, surf and turf. Surf and turf. Yeah. Uh, salmon has been marinating for nine days. Yes, the smoked salmon. Yeah. And is now in the smoker. Yeah. So I've had it in the smoker or in the, it's been in the refrigerator and covered in a maple syrup and garlic marinade. Mm-hmm. for the last nine days so it's technically already cured because it's been in that <laughs> yeah. sugar brine all this time so it's already cured but now it's in the smoker to finish off yeah. applewood so, smoke applewood smoke so i'm i'm anxious i haven't made done smoked salmon in a while so but for tonight i'm going to uh we are having grilled steak with grilled salmon filet mm. and uh salads that's salads. supper tonight very summery. Very summery. Well, it's going to be a hot one this afternoon. So, yeah. um, anyway. we already got some questions. Shoot, where'd you get the wooden heart? Oh, this actually is from Viking Woodcrafts. Oh, there you go, Viking yeah. Woodcrafts. Viking Woodcrafts has these. I like this. Um, if you've painted the the little snowman, um, the Let It Snow, and it's on the the arched sign. Um, there's designs for three hearts in that pattern and each one has a little snowman on it. But yeah, I really like this, this heart ornament shape. It's a really nice one. And then, um, we're talking about skulls. These are the printables. Mm-hmm. We got so, bookmarks and tags. There's and... tags and then, you know, just fun stuff. Oh, you did some I, like tattoo style scroll work too. Yeah, of course. Because I I was on a tattoo bender. I don't know. Um, I think that this would make a cute tattoo. The little sugar skull lollipop. (laughs) (laughs) I think he'd be cute. I had way too much fun. And then, of course, the cupcake led to ice cream. And 
I mean, who the heck knows how my brain works, but the fact that it works at all some days is a miracle, but there we go. That's so these printables are available on the website right now. So you can get them in the free printable section of the website. I the, added two others this week too. And, um, and we do have another one coming up. This one is not on the website yet. Wink, wink, nudge. Oh, it's a chickadee. Isn't he cute? Eh, he's annoying. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Renee does not like chickadees. I like to so look sweet. at them, but the second they open their mouth. <laughs> so, um, I have a cr couple of Christmas patterns coming up very shortly. And once those are up, then we'll be posting the free printable. But um, I just wanted you to see what was coming up in the next couple of weeks, which I really like this one. There's a city in Indiana named Ashfultum. Is there really? Yeah. I wonder why. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. I think I'm, I, I'm actually anxious to get painting today. I have, I'll be honest, I haven't painted at all this week. So I am like literally. You didn't paint at all this week? I started base coating something last night. That was it. That's all I've done. It looks Christmassy. Week. It is Christmassy. Is, it, <laughs> is there a flower? No, there's no flower right. in it, but it is full of chickadees. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, and you're painting a flower next week. I am. Yes. Whether there. you like it or not. Yeah, so. We are doing floral next week. We are doing a floral next Saturday. I'm not telling you yet what it is because I haven't painted it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I can tell you what it is because I have it partially. Oh, partially. Ah, gotcha. um, we are doing sunflowers and a teapot. <gasps> teapot? A teapot. But you did sunflower and a teacup. Ah, I see it. Never mind. Oh, welcome. Just, ah, welcome back to the show. Yeah. <laughs> So um, we're going to first focus on doing the background for this piece. And if it, I'd had my poop in a group this week, it's been an incredibly busy week. I don't have Renee in the studio all week packing orders anymore because he is full time in the gallery. So I have ha kind of had my hands full this week. <laughs> of course, this would be the week that I decide I'm going to put all those kits on. So <laughs> my own fault. <laughs> So I'm going to dry this really quick. So the first thing we're going to focus on is doing this polka dot design in the background. Um, I did use warm white, uh, but we're going to use a glazing technique over top of it to uh, sort of reduce those dots a little bit. We don't want them to be right in your face the whole time. So we want to reduce them a little and we're going to do that with a glazing technique, which is just a wash of color over top there's uh Mernie 928 says there's my skull pen there it is i love this thing the the pen that it came in that came in it yeah um it leaked all over my desk the other day so i got rid of the pen and i slipped it over mine because i love my skull pen there i love go. this and then um the really cool part is that my daughter made me the pendant to match Oh, yeah? Yeah. Right on. So, it's flippity flipping awesome. I love this thing. Uh, da, da. This thing sits on my desk all the time. Okay, where is my polka dot stencil? Whoa. What? Oh, it's just a big message. Yeah. Don't know how it happened, but uh, a form popped up for me to join the paid group, so I did. <laughs> I've been trying to do this for many months. Hope this was a real thing and not a ha ha. You fell for this scam. <laughs> it showed up in my email. It was creating with Tracy and payment went to Google. Yep. Uh, Nancy McNeil Picardi. Yes, Nancy. Welcome to the group. We huh. will be uh, giving you access to the uh, the server, the members part of the server on our website as soon as we are done here today. I cannot find my Pokemon stencil. How do I lose things like in 30 seconds? I'm telling you. Oh, there it is. Nope, that's not it. It'll do. She could hide her own Easter eggs. I, yeah, that's me today. <laughs> I could. Ooh, piece I candy. Never, I, <laughs> 
needs to I'm going to zoom in on what you're doing here. That's a good idea. <laughs> While you're... Getting my poop in a group? Yeah. Yeah. There we are. As long as she doesn't move it around too much. We should be good. We should be good. So, base coat for this. Two coats, lamp black is all you really need. You just want a nice uniform surface. That's all. And I'm, <laughs> this one is a 3 8 polka dot. I used a quarter inch polka dot for my background, but the technique is going to remain the same. So I'm going to put my stencil in place and then we're going to use, I'm using a half inch stencil brush, the Dynasty Stencil Pro. I have all of these on sale this week on the website. So if you need stencil brushes, don't forget to use your coupon code. If the size you're looking for is no longer available on my site, go and check it out at thebrushguys.com um, and then use your coupon code TracyM on that on the Brush Guys website. That'll give you a nice little discount on top of their wholesale prices. <laughs> she has bought in her own Christmas presents. I, yes, I have. <laughs> and hid them. <laughs> and forgot about them. <laughs> Mom, who's the food ninja for? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember the food ninja. I am so surprised. <laughs> oh my God, where did I hide that? <laughs> I got news for you. I bought you guys Christmas gifts and I still haven't found them. And that was like 10 years ago. They go missing. Oh, that's, wow. That's why I put everything in, in individual bags. This is yours. <laughs> because otherwise, I'll forget where I put things. I keep it all in one spot. I have, well, you know what? If you're shopping for one person, you can do that. When you're shopping for. I was shopping for three people. I kept it all in one spot. Yeah. I've tried that, but I usually. Like, I hide all the gifts in one spot, not like shop all at Walmart yeah, or something. You usually only <laughs> buy like one or two gifts yeah. per person. That would I be. I keep myself like budgeted. That would be a miracle. I do too, but it doesn't mean I stick to it. <laughs> so when we're doing this uh, stenciling on here, we don't want this to be absolutely perfect. We kind of want these polka dots to be a little irregular um, and a little faint. We don't want them perfect because perfect is boring. So these are a little too bright for me. So I'm going to take... I can, these things are fl flipping awesome. I can thank my girl Sandy for this. Some of you, you're getting your parcels in the mail, and you noticed, if you wondered what this thing was, <laughs> this is what this thing what is. What is your phone doing? I don't know. So I just give this a light sanding, like so, just to distress those polka dots a little bit. So they're not perfect. I want them to look a little worn and a little soft and a little imperfect. <laughs> These things are flipping fantastic. Oh, that's what it was. New order, new order, new order, new order, new order. <laughs> oh, that's, they're downloading the... Uh, yeah, they're all downloading the... Excellent. Downloading the freebie. Yes. What am I missing? So, once you have that lightly distressed, I'm going to take a little bit of lamp black and I'm going to heavily thin it. Now you can thin it with a little bit of uh, fast dry glaze or you can do it with water. I've got a little bit of water in this and you're just going to put a wash of that thinned black over everything, just like so. Neatness doesn't count, perfection is to be avoided at all costs. So all it's going to do is dim them, subdue them a little bit so that they're not in your face. Don't want bright white because if they were bright white, they're going to compete with everything else that we do. And we don't want that. And then you're just going to dry that. And then we'll end up with some nice, subtle polka dots. I like it. That's why I like this distressing techniques it was like an inconsistent and imperfect background. yeah and it it um it doesn't look so heavily structured 
yeah when things are, are softened and distressed and it still lends pattern for the background it still gives us pattern it gives us some movement whatnot in the background but it doesn't become the focal point which is the whole idea behind this it's just to support the design that you're putting onto it yeah apparently keith was waiting for the neatness doesn't count oh was he <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> so in this original in the original piece i've got polka dots on the down thank you i got polka dots on the on the cupcake rack wrapper Oh, that varnish really reflects the light. Uh, yeah, it does, which is another reason to not use it in the class. Um, so I've got these polka dots. Again, it's the quarter inch, just like what's in the background. You can use that and stencil your um, cupcake wrapper, but I've got something a little different in mind this time around. I like adapting and changing things a little bit. So That's a very good point, Jessica. What's that? I can't believe we forgot to mention what our prizes are for oh the day. Oh, my goodness. We do have prizes today. Do we? We do. We do. Um, we've got uh, some Tombow professional grade pencils, a uh, pencil set. Yeah. Uh, we've also got a really cool little tattoo cupcake ornament mm. in the mm -hmm. uh, in there as well that you can paint. It's laser etched, so you don't have to worry about a pattern. You just can go ahead and paint it any way you want. Um, it is tattoo design, so I think you'll enjoy it. It's kind of fun. And then, of course, we put uh, one of our Be Kind pencil cases in there. Yep. So your nice little pencil case to hold all your goodies. And then, of course, there's some other fun stuff in there. I like sending new stuff. Um, oh, we also got our new um, our giveaways, our stencil giveaways in, if you look over there. Oh, they're daisies. Yeah, we get daisy stencils this time around. Last time we had sunflowers. This time we have daisies. When did those come in? uh thursday thursday yeah nice so we have a nice little daisy or you know six petal flower what have you so we have a nice little uh daisy freebie so every order that we ship out um goes out with a, a little freebie stencil in it so we've got a new one for you this week we went a whole week without any waiting for them to come in <laughs> oh i think it was longer than a week oh could have been i thought yeah it, it might was have been close to weeks. a month where's it really that yeah. long wow mind you Shipping has been a pain. Yeah, shipping has been a nightmare. Getting them to, one, to pick up anything. Yeah. And then it's just been different. Okay, so here are our base colors for our uh, cupcake. We've got the icing on top is based with melon. Uh, I used melon. That's the original color that I used. However, if you don't have it, um, coral blush will work just fine. You can go into the coral tones for this. It will be just fine. You don't have to, to worry too much. I think we're going to try and incorporate Renee's uh, favorites, the neons, into this Love one the neons. too. <laughs> he kind of likes those. They're great for popping highlights. Yes, they are. They're fabulous. So we're going to um, use the melon today for uh, the icing. Of course, the skull itself is warm white. And then, of course, we have to have our Ashfaltum. And uh, then we've got uh, this uh, dark green. I'm going to be using a little bit of plantation pine to shade. If I have some, I do have some. So we've got a little bit of plantation pine to shade. This is the base coat for this is antique green. So that takes care of our colors on the cupcake. Now we go to the cherry. Um, originally, I had used Tuscan Red for the cherry. However, I, for the life of me, cannot find my bottle of Tuscan Red. So I'm going to be using uh, Cherry Red. I figured that's a good enough substitute. So Cherry Red is the color I'm using. And then uh, we need a nice bright green for our highlights on this. I had originally used Olive Green, I believe. Um, I do not have a bottle of Olive Green, I don't think. I do not. I do, however, have margarita. So I think that's what I'll use. I'm going to use some margarita for that. And then we have lamp black, obviously, for the background. So we're going to use that. 
And we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing today, which is something we don't usually do a whole lot of. And I have three different dry brushes that we're going to talk about today. And we're going to talk about a dome blender and we're going to, or there's my dome blender. And I have a Mezzaluna. This is my Mezzaluna. Dynasty Mezzaluna. It's like a, tr a crescent brush. It's a nice little tiny one. This is the size small. <laughs> so we're going to... <laughs> cherry red for cherries? Seems Ooh, logical. Seems logical, <laughs> yeah. Works for me. <laughs> I'm amazed I remembered that. <laughs> there we go. I love pearl paints. Pearl paints are awesome. Uh, yeah, pearl paints are awesome, but we've got some fabulous, fabulous um, neons. Neons. Decorant makes the most amazing neons. So we're going to get started by, uh, let's work on this icing up here. And our shading color for that is the same color that the cherries are based. We're going to work with that cherry red. I'm going to scare up. I've got uh, a couple of angled shaders. I'm using the Dynasty Faux Squirrel angled shaders. This one is a quarter inch. And uh, this is my five eighths, three eighths, sorry. So I've got a three eighths and a quarter inch. Those are gonna, because we're working on such a small surface, I'm going to work with a smaller brush. Check on puppy. So we're going to start with shading our icing and the first place we want to put some is around our cherry. So I'm going to put a little float of that cherry red right there just to create that little divot that the cherry is sitting in, like so. And then that same red, we're going to shade on this side Now I went with the cherry red because it is transparent, much like the Tuscan red, and it is slightly blue. It's what we refer to as a blue red. So I wanted that transparency. Whew, love that red. Such a pretty, pretty red. And then don't forget, we need to, to shape that icing a little bit. We need to have that little shadow underneath and along the bottom, like so. Such a great color, that cherry red. I like the melon. It, it's nice and opaque. It gave a really nice base color. I'm going to put a little divot underneath so that we have that little float there. We want to create that that little bit of depth. So it looks like the icing is folding over the the front of it. We need to have that little shadow in there. I'm going to make this a little darker. And I'm going to dry this a little bit. And then I'm going to go back in and deepen them again. One more just for giggles. Oh my goodness, I think that's a little strong. It's a lot strong. The nice thing about acrylic paint is that if it gets a little strong, you can take a little water to it. There we go. Not too happy with that one. Oh my goodness. What? Remember what I said? Some days... What? Plan my own surprise party. What'd you forget? No, I didn't forget anything. I just forgot how to float. <laughs> <laughs> I found cookies. You found cookies. <laughs> no, I good. found cookies. They weren't hidden very well. 
No. No. They were in the cookie bin. <laughs> Which meant you went into the kitchen. Yep. Mm-hmm. Dot nice. is racked right out. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Well, she spent most of the morning outside. So, I, um, in the original piece, the eyes are actually just sort of a tan color, look very hollow. They're kind of grim looking, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's just kind of a little bit creepy. I wanted him more cute than creepy. So, I put the same melon that I have on the icing, I put inside the eyes. So, I'm going to shade that melon with a little of that Tuscan red too. Oh, we got people from Brazil watching. Bom dia. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to be starting a touch of Asia. I don't have berry cobbler. How about cranberry wine or burgundy wine? That will work. Either yeah. one of those colors will work. It's more for the transparency and keeping it light gives you those pinky tones. So don't beat yourself up. If you don't have the exact color, it really doesn't matter. Find the one that's closest to and you'll be fine. <laughs> coffee goes good with cookies. You're darn right it does. According to Renee, coffee goes good with everything. I found Including a sarcasm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Second language for you. <laughs> Coffee and sarcasm. Where's Bob? Bob is right here next to me. Mm -hmm. He's not far. He's never He's far. Never far. <laughs> <laughs> there. Bob can visit. Since we're doing Halloween, we can. <laughs> Since we're doing something with a skull, might as well have the creepy gingerbread man here. <laughs> Exactly. I'm not seeing the correlation, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put just a weak float of warm white on the highlight side right here, just to lighten that melon a little bit. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I just like the, it just softens it a little, I think. I'm sorry, JL. <laughs> Just. I can't. No, no licorice. No, Renee doesn't do licorice. I, that's. I love licorice. I like red licorice I in like small black. amounts. I like black licorice. Black licorice? Uh, it'd have to be the right one. I've had some pretty nasty ones. But there's some that are really good. Well, my favorite is um, good old-fashioned soft black licorice that's my favorite which is funny i love love seasoning rice with star anise though yeah <laughs> and that's a very heavy licorice flavor yeah but it's not licorice no yeah. it just tastes like it licorice itself is used medicinally in a lot of things mm. uh, the thing you have to remember is that licorice is toxic like real licorice is toxic. So it's a good idea to eat it in moderation, use it in moderation. Yeah. So. so I took a little bit of lamp black and I mixed it with just a touch of um, that cherry red just to shade that berry a little bit. We just finished the peanut butter cookies. I just ate a couple of those. <laughs> I love peanut butter cookies. They're one of my favorites. Food is your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like Who to eat? Who are you trying food? to get? Food. <laughs> what, no, but what kind of food? Good food. All food. All, all good food. All good food, yeah. So I'm just deepening some of these floats. And then I'm going to do something I know that none of you are going to be surprised by. Or if you've been following me at all that you're going to be surprised by. I'm going mm -hmm. to grab a little bit of a schvaltum. No. <gasps> I got six bottles of Eschvalton yesterday. Oh, your shipment came in. My shipment came in. So, I ordered a bunch of paint from uh, Country Bear. <laughs> I, I don't drink, but I eat. 
It's a lot. It's because they don't drink. <laughs> Call it stress eating. <laughs> Call it stress eating, yeah. So I'm you would gonna... never know, though. No. <laughs> it's got a straight gullet, like a seagull. You've heard the expression, it goes through him like, you know, through a goose. Yeah. Yeah, that's Renee. Yeah. It's a straight gullet. Licorice and banana? It's an odd combo, but I could see it. I, I can too. And it's that super sweet from Where'd the... Where'd you get it? I can't find it. Get what? Oh, the Ashvaltum. I ordered my Ashvaltum from Country Bear. And if you're in Canada, they are a great source. Because they, one, they're a decor distributor. And uh, they carry large quantities. So I've been ordering my Ashvaltum from them because they're my best source for it. Um, another Canadian... One is uh, Stockade. It's re also excellent. So I'm just deepening these um, shadows on the icing with a f thinned, heavily thinned asphaltum. And it gives that, you know, nice deep color. So, and then while I've got the asphaltum on my palette, we're going to start shading that skull. And I want him... To be quite, quite dark, I am going to, ooh, not quite that dark. Hello. There we go. <laughs> so I'm shading up underneath the icing with some thin dish faltum. Da -da -da. I do like ash faltum, in case you hadn't figured that out. Fasting for 16 hours and I can't eat anything until 11.30 Pacific time? Oh my goodness. And all this talk about cookies is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 16 hour fast, that's a long time. It is. I wouldn't last. <laughs> for somebody who rarely eats breakfast, it's amazing. He starts eating like 11, 11 o'clock. And then you can feed him every hour on the hour. Yeah. Until midnight. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can't feed me after midnight. That's true. Can't get you wet after midnight either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there a link to that scrapbook page you mentioned? Scrapbook.com. That's, That's an all easy it one. is. <laughs> Scrap Scrapbook.com. Scrapbook.com. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's a, they're a terrific site. Uh, their service is great. I love this hat. They have an awesome selection. So I've put my shadows in here. But while I'm sitting here staring at my face taking shape, I wanted to tell you something. The original plate that I had done it on was this compressed um, plywood plate. Um, I originally had gotten this one from Bear With Us. Well, they are no longer in business. Um, so I have been looking for a source for these plates and I have had zero luck. Uh, so because of that, I went digging through my stash and I found this. I found this. And this plate is from Sheila Landry. I just love her surfaces. She just comes up with the most elegant surfaces. And this one was really, really great. Um, I, I know Sheila's watching. So Sheila, if you want to um, pop the link up for this plate on your website, if you want to pop that up in the, in the chat, I'd appreciate it. This one actually translated beautifully. You can bring it closer to you if you'd like. It makes it easier so for you. So this surface actually translated beautifully for this design. So if you're looking for a plate, can't find that compressed one, go to this one. It's absolutely gorgeous. There we go. So now that I've got one coat of um, asphaltum on there, I'm going to start deepening these shadows because I want them quite, quite deep. 
So we're going to come up the side of the face here. She also has a wider center. I, you know, I just love this plate. I was digging through my stash and I, this is what I find. And I'm like, yeah, I get happy about the weirdest <laughs> things these days. Crystal Hendricks says, I've been going through Scrapbook's website for the last 30 minutes. <laughs> I, you know, I can get lost on there. It's worse than Pinterest. The hubby thanks you. I'm sure he does. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, there are so many products available to us that we can incorporate into what we do. And then we sometimes forget that if it's not on a toll painting site or a decorative painting site, um, we tend to get a little, you know, blinders on sometimes. And, and I'm probably one of the worst for that. So, uh, but scrapbook.com, I can find the most amazing stamps. Oh, remember the stamps? Remember these? That's where I got these. These woodware craft collection stamps. That's where I got them. Stamp at scrapbook.com. Phenomenal. Looking for any of the Tim Holtz stuff? Scrapbook.com. There you go. Yeah, like, they're amazing. They awesome. have a great site. Yeah, really a great site. Sheila says, thank you for using my stuff. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's so hard, Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> Like, really, so hard. I mean, the quality of them, the finish of them, they're just beautiful. So why wouldn't I? They're gorgeous. So I really like having, I want all of that deep shadow on, what am I going to say? On the right side. Hello. I was spinning it around, forgot which way it was up. <laughs> so I want a nice dark shadow on that side. We are going to highlight some more. I do want to add a little gravitas to this. So I'm going to put a little float under the eye like so. And I want to deepen this a little bit, a little bit more. He just becomes very quirky and a bit more personality when you when you start deepening all of these shadows. And adding little details around the face, like deepening the shadow underneath the eye, deepening the shadow at the temple. It just gives him a little more structure, a little more shape, and it just makes him look more interesting. Mary Lou Harris, I can only find pure pigment ash fault. Is that the only way? It will work. Yes, if you can only find the, the plaid version, it will work. <laughs> just make sure you use very small quantity. <laughs> <laughs> And thin it out nicely. But yes, it will work. So, I think I'm okay with that shadow right now. So I need to add a little structure, some shading to our cupcake. So we're going to do that. Got my eyes shaded. Got my face shaded. I want to shade my cupcake a little bit. So I'm going to load my brush with a little bit of, I'm using uh, Plantation Pine. Ooh, I got bit by something. And I'm going to just shade those vertical lines like so. What is this? Susan Haley with a $10 donation. Yay, Susan, thank you so much. The puppies, thank you. Uh, happy to ba be back today. COVID was not fun Oh, at no, all. I hope you're feeling <laughs> better. Uh, thanks for the fun, Tracy and Renee. I've been with you since the beginning of the videos. Wow. Awesome. We're coming up on two years. On doing videos. On doing videos, yeah. yeah. Two years. That's crazy. And almost, almost at 5,400 subscribers. Yeah. Nice. Getting very close. We want to hit that 6,000 mark. Uh, I think our next goal should be 10,000. Okay. Okay, guys. Get on to it. Get on. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't Ten, hit... 10,000, <laughs> it would be a wicked milestone. It would be a wicked milestone. I would be excited about that. 
Uh, 5,000 was a huge milestone because that actually gave us a lot of access to new tools. and. Yeah, it, well, it lets us do more. Yeah, mm -hmm. lets us do more. Yeah. And more for you guys. Yeah. Allows us to upload longer videos, too, because now YouTube's got a thing on that. Yeah. So it has to do with data rates and stuff like yep. that. But. So on that cupcake, I want to put a little highlight opposite my shadow. I'm just going to use a little weak float. I'm just using a little bit of margarita because I can. And then I had some. I'm using margarita. The original pattern, I believe, called for um, olive green. But I didn't have any, so. Ooh. Does Sheila use Facebook at all? Yes. Yes? Yes. Sheila, you got to go on Facebook and go into the chat for this live. And let everybody know that uh, what your website is. Yeah. Her website is tollpaintingdesigns.com. She's got actually everything. Yeah. She's yeah. Got oh, she everything. Just put, yeah, she put it up in YouTube. Yeah, she's got some awesome, awesome designs on her website for surfaces. Oh, and some of her patterns are flipping amazing. And she's playing with watercolor this week. She's doing a blue jay in watercolor. Just she's incredible. Working with all sorts of mediums, eh? Yeah, she's done stuff in pastel chalk pencil. She's been working in colored pencil. She's done stuff with watercolor. I will try. <laughs> she's amazing. Tollpaintingdesigns.com for those on Facebook. Yeah. Tollpaintingdesigns.com. All one big word. Yep. So I'm going to take my asphalt. And now that I've got that little highlight in, I'm going to go underneath my little skull here and just put a little float just underneath his yes two jawline. years of learning and gaining confidence well i'm glad we have a lot of fun doing this <laughs> and it gets me painting and constantly designing which is exciting because i you come up with new things and i new come techniques. up with new things and new techniques and new products and i get to play a little bit mm. And then I have fun. And then I change my mind when I'm working on stuff and go, you know what? I like this pattern, but it could be better. <laughs> and I have to improve on things. And then she pulls out her hair the rest of the week working on the website. <laughs> yep. So, because I'm ridiculous at times. So, I have all of that structure in. So, I'm going to come back up. I just realized something. I didn't paint the nose. Inside the nose here. Uh, it's a, it's okay, Sheila. You don't you don't have to. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say it again. Tollpaintingdesigns.com. Yeah. Type it into the chat. Oh, that doesn't help. That's You're not YouTube. on Facebook. Hello, hello. It's not Facebook. That's YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so I just realized I hadn't done anything to the inside of the nose here, and I wanted to put just a little bit of that coral in that little spot there so <laughs> oh okay so patrick wants to buy a bunch of Sheila landry surfaces oh her stuff is beautiful patrick you will not be disappointed i i hadn't seen that category on your website <laughs> it's dangerous it's yeah. a dangerous category yeah There. <laughs> There's Sheila. I think I made it. Yes, you did. So I'm going to grab a little bit of titanium white because I want to highlight this um, this warm white on the face a little bit. Make sure I have titanium white. The other day I went to squeeze out some titanium white. And I couldn't figure out how come my highlight wasn't working and it wasn't titanium white. I grabbed a second bottle of warm white. Like I said, I could plan my own surprise party. Whoa, what is going on with that camera? I don't know. This camera is going all whitewashy. So I'm just pulling a little bit of titanium white in uh, just to snap some of this highlighting little bit because I'm finding it was looking a little peaky and I wanted to brighten up this little fella a little bit 
There we go. Okay. Uh, it's because there's a lot of white. Yep. Okay. There. I'm going to bring down the brightness a bit. So, we're going to put a little highlight. This time I'm going to use that warm white. We're going to put a little highlight on the lower portion of the eye. And I'm coming in from the edge just a little bit. Oh. Puppy's awake. Yep. She just yawned. Mm -hmm. I think Dad came in too. Yep. <laughs> so I like to leave that little gap, that little line right there. So I have that half moon. It's going to make these eyes a little creepy, but cute creepy. And then I'm going to take a little bit, a little dot of warm white. Those colors are a little bit more richer now, eh? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yes, much better. Yeah. <laughs> Did you play with the color? I uh, Brightness. Good. So, see what a difference that makes? You have that little bit of brightness. Makes the eyes appear more round. And then by putting that highlight in, now he's alive. I like it. So today is all about the brushes because I've got, um, this is my Dynasty Mezzaluna. I love these dry brushes. I particularly like this one because it's small and I can get it into smaller spaces. It's ideal for this type of thing. The other reason I like these is because it's a blend of both natural and synthetic hairs. And so they're both different textures. And so it gives us a really nice dry brush effect. So I'm going to be using that and we're going to start with the highlights on that icing. We're going to use a little bit of warm white, just a touch on our mezzaluna. At first I load it up, make sure there's lots of, I have a stray hair on this brush. It's going to drive me insane. There we go. So I've got lots of paint in the brush and then I'm just going to scumble it on my surface so that it almost dry. And then you just scuff your surface with it. I like working in a circular fashion for this because I find it gives you a softer effect. And especially when the brush is almost dry. And when it stops transferring color, you grab a little more paint, scumble it on some paper towel, and then scumble in a circular fashion. So I'm just basically scrubbing the color in. And this gives us that soft, more dry appearance. Like so. I love how this looks. Now, if you don't like this more, um, some people are not comfortable using this type of a brush because they don't feel it gives them as much control. Um, I've been using these ones f for quite some time and it did take me a while to get used to using them, um, but I do absolutely love the effect. It's very dry. It has a very soft effect, which is really, really nice. So it just gives, you know, a nice effect to that icing. I love how that looks. It's very soft, very easy. And you can just take that right over top of those shadows because that color is very soft and very transparent and it will give you that nice soft look. Now, it is going to create a little bit of dust because it's a dry brush. Just wipe it away. So, I want to come over to the cherry on this little guy and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to switch to a different um, dry brush. I'm going to switch over to this dome 
This is, uh, these ones are also from Dynasty. These are in the 200 series. I love these ones because the bristle is different. It is extremely soft. So it's ideal for creating really soft highlights. I think they're salmon thin. Okay, cool. Yeah, the last puff just went in. So. Okay. So I, it's the same thing. I just pick up a tiny amount of paint on this one. And this one doesn't have that same, um, remember that sketching noise? So I just moved back and forth very gently on the surface. And look at that highlight. Nice and soft. Now I can let this one dry a little bit. Wipe dust off. And I can bring that down here too. Right over top of that uh, margarita, I'm just going to put a nice soft dry brush. So it is all about what you like. If you like a softer looking dry brush effect, or if you want something a little coarser, then choose the right brush to do that. In this particular case, I wanted something very soft. So it's a, a little more subtle. So I'm using the softer bristle brush to get that softer effect. If I want something a little heavier, a little coarser, I switch over to this, um, this Mezzaluna. So again, pick up a tiny bit of paint, scumble it on your palette, just like you would for a stencil brush. And if I want a little more color, circular fashion, look at that, nice and soft. But it's a coarser looking, it is a soft dry brush, but it's a coarser texture. So and if I want something softer, like I do on this cherry, I use that softer dry brush. The dome oh, good grief. Got my fingers in the green paint. So there is our softer. So that next highlight is a little smaller, a little shorter, so that I get a light impact point. And the same here. And I like the size of this one. This one is the number four dome blender. It's very soft, but it gives you a nice finish. Very nice. So I need to put a little divot in the top of my cherry. A little place for the stem. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of lamp black. And I'm going to switch over to my quarter inch angled shader. So I'm going to literally put a little divot in the top of my cherry. Like so. Look at that. I'm always amazed at how much that dry brush softens everything. So now I'm going to dig out my 10 aught extra long detail liner and a little bit of warm white. I'm going to thin this out quite a bit because I want it to come off the brush nice and smooth. Lots of water. Lots and lots of water. So I want to put just a thin highlight with that warm white just on the leading edge of that divot. It's a nice thin line. And I'm going to do the same here. A little bit, just a little. So this is your opportunity to clean up a few things. If it looks you know, perhaps not as clean and as smooth as you would like, uh, especially on the warm white or on the that coral. This is your chance to clean things up a little bit with just that little thin line. I'm liking it. And I'm going to take that liner brush and some of that margarita or olive green or matcha green, whatever bright yellow green you're using, and we need to put a stem on our cherry. 
like so. I like it. And I need a little stroke. So we've got a little highlight here. Just at that bit of nice. Now that icing is going to have a little shine to it, so I want to have that little stroke of white on there. And then I'm going to come back down. Remember I said I got a nice little fun detail to put in on this cupcake wrapper. We're going to use a little bit of thinned warm white or titanium white, whichever white you want. And I'm going to start right here, just at the edge of our wrapper. And I'm going to come down diagonally with a slight curve. And then I'm going to do it again, but I want a little more space. How does the salmon look? Salmon looks good. I haven't taken it out yet. Yeah, it can sit. And puppy wanted to. So I've got just four strands, I think is enough. I'm going to rinse my liner brush and I'm going to pick up, I've got a small zero round right here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white or titanium white, whatever white you used here. Oh, see? Short-term memory loss. Back to my liner. Ignore the round because I'm not there yet. I forgot to do something. <laughs> Lights are on. Nobody's home. So I need to make this look like a spider's web. Oof. So I need to put in those little curved lines like so. If you look at the line drawing, I actually drew it in the line drawing. Now it looks like a spider's web. Now I can take my zero round. <laughs> what did I miss? And I like I like putting dip dots where these things join. Just gives it a little texture and a little interest. And it just makes it more fun. Almost jewel-like. So then we have our little spider's web in there. Mm, so cute. Now, one of the things I'm constantly doing when I'm doing something like this is I'm always looking at where I need to adjust things and one of the places that I need to adjust on this is right above the eyes. I need to put a little, I like having this sort of little frown line in here. You can see we've got that little inverted V. I like to do the same thing on his forehead because we're going to give him eyebrows. What? Just short ones. <laughs> Little ones. Eyebrows? Yep. All right, so I just want a little short line like so. Ah, I see. Just gives him a little more character, you know? A cranial divot. A cranial divot. <laughs> <laughs> WTF lines right in the middle of the forehead. So I think he's so cute, cuter. Now, because it's me, I'll probably grab my gel pen and do a little bit of detailing here and there because I can and I like it. Oh, there's Deb Antonick. She's caffeinated. She's caffeinated. Well, you know how I know that? 
Yeah. Because she's awake. <laughs> yeah, she's awake. <laughs> she's up. I find the biggest problem with dry brushing for me is that I use way too much pressure. Yeah, it's I'm very heavy handed. And mm. so I have a tendency to uh, try to hold back a little bit because I tend to get very heavy handed. I'm the same way with colored pencils. and With domed brushes, domed ones, I seem to use much less pressure and get better results. Yeah, because it's a softer brush. So I'm just taking my little gel pen there because I like to add these little details. So I'm just putting in those little scribbly lines because I can. Just enough to detail things. I do like my gel pen, especially this 3.38. I love this thing because I can do these details without getting that thick, thick line. So, and I like kind of like how it looks. And I just got a whole bunch of these in, thank heavens. There. Love it. I do like little details like that. So there we have our little skull. I think he's kind of cute and he's fun. So we're going to move from the center out to these little guys here, out onto these cherries. The cherries are super easy. We're going to dry brush highlights and we're going to, um, we're going to use that quarter inch angled shader quite a bit for this. Now these cherries are base coated with um, cherry red. Now to get a nice opaque, you're gonna need two to three coats. So I'm gonna show you a little trick. One, to keep them looking nice and bright red. I took some of that melon that we used on the, um, on the frosting and then I base coated it with one coat of melon and then I'm going to take the red, if I can find my round brush, there it is. Okay, so I got 147 names. Oh, wow. I nice. believe. 149. 149 right. two, names. Two more just got added. Excellent. And make sure that I'm... Yep, to get entered in these uh, giveaways, all you have to do is just like and share that video. Hit that share button. And if you're on the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. The more people that hit that subscribe button, the better. So look at the difference. Look at how this is with just the black as the undercoat. And I've got three coats of red on that. And I have one coat of uh, that melon and one coat of red. And look at how nice and bright and how vibrant and all of the black is covered. It looks just looks spectacular. So to shade our cherries, we're going to break out our quarter inch angled shader. And I'm using a little bit of lamp black on my brush. If you were intimidated by all that black, then mix a little touch of red with it. And then you're going to shade, but you're going to come just shy of the edge. I want to see a thin line of that red showing. So I'm going to Shade one side of my berry, cherry, <laughs> like so. And I like that thin line. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that warm white, heavily thinned, and we're going to put a highlight on the other side. 
and we're using that same rule of thumb. I'm just coming shy of the edge, and ugh, it's that ever strong. I'm not happy. There we go. Wasn't quite thin enough. As soon as she's done painting that cherry, I'm putting up the wheel. So I've got a little bit of warm white opposite the shadow. I'm going to dry it. And then we're going to use our dome blender to actually put our dry brush highlight in. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of white paint. And my dry brush is going to come inside that, that little float. And I'm just going to go in a half circle form back and forth with a nice gentle touch. Just like that. And then we're going to take that angled shader again. And I'm coming back to my original little puddle of paint. And do you see where that stem connects? We're going to put a little shadow right there. Am I going to spin the wheel? Yes, I'm going to spin the wheel. I'm, gonna, I'm just waiting for her to finish the cherry. Yep. When she's done the cherry, I'll bring up the wheel. And then I'm going to take that little round. I'm just going to put a little comma stroke of white for our highlight. You could do just a dot if you want to. <laughs> and then I'm going to use my liner brush to put in my stem like so understanding how to paint a skull will help you with uh your anatomy <laughs> it will god help us if we all had skulls that shaped like this one <laughs> yeah. but it it will it'll, yeah. it'll allow you to understand proportions when it comes yes. to like eye depth and yep. Where, where the cheekbone should be in relation to the eyes and the nose. Yep. So. I think everybody should draw a skull every once in a while just to. So we have a leaf here and I'm putting a float at the base of the leaf where it joins the stem with a little bit of plantation pine. Ooh. It's awake. Uh oh. Don't touch any of the cameras, you. Is the door the open up there? No. no. And then I'm going to load that angled shader with a little bit of margarita for the highlight on the tip of that leaf. So I'm bringing that little bit of margarita out to the point of the brush, or out to the point of the leaf. And just like that plantation pine, it's going to be a sort of U-shaped float. cat. Yes, she is. And then I gotta show you something, because I discovered this the other day. I'm going to dry this. Um, I am seriously obsessed with these. Oh my gosh. Is Edward here? I don't know. <laughs> Poor Edward. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it. Does it matter what side you shade the highlight on the cherries? No, not really, because the cherries are all turned around. Mm -hmm. oh. so the cherries go in all directions, so you don't really have to worry about it. I just tend to think, okay, put everything on, on you know, highlights on the right, shadows on the left. And then as I turn, I just keep it that way. That way I get fun highlights. But I wanted to show you something. So I really get annoyed when I have graphite lines left. And this has been a recent discovery is this knock eraser. Um, I just love this thing because I can take graphite off of a black background without polishing that black. And it takes graphite off white, black, gray. Oh man, am I miss I'm missing quite a bit. Super easy. Love this thing. Works like a hot damn. Did you use a circle stencil? I used my shape maker. Shape maker! I use my shape maker, which is 
I think I have one right here. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a miracle if I had one right here? <laughs> <laughs> I do. So this is what I use um, when I'm transferring my line drawings, when I'm oh, they could barely designing. See that. <laughs> okay, I'll put it on top of this. Uh, this one has polka dots in every size, circles in every size imaginable. So when I need to trace something, um, I will just simply locate the circle that fits on the tracing. And in this particular case, it's this one. So then I just trace with my graphite or my tracing paper. In this case, I'm using my pencil. But... It makes it so easy to get nice crisp circles when you're tracing your line drawings on because, you know, things circles need to be circles, not egg shaped. So, yeah, this is what I use. We have a set of these. There's one's missing from this set, but we have um, a set of squares and then we have what and there's another one with multiple shapes and whatnot in it. But um, I absolutely love having these templates because it just simplifies things. When, for when you're tracing and designing. It's ideal uh, for when you're designing. No, I believe she used the one quarter inch polka dot. Yeah, the stencil in the background is the quarter inch polka dot. It's the M222. Yeah. Yeah. It's my favorite. I have like a minor obsession with polka dots. Okay, maybe not so minor. <laughs> you okay, fairy? That's a lot of capital letters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you show the dome blender? Yes, absolutely. Can you show it closer? <laughs> I can. Let's just find a clean one. Closer. <laughs> okay. I'm using, like I said, I'm using a small one. Nope. Sheila Landry's got a question. Oh. Okay. So this is the one that I'm using. This is, um, this is a number four dynasty. It's in the 200 series. These ones are softer. These ones are much softer than the Mezzaluna. I like the Mezzaluna. I just got to remember to clean them. Oh my goodness. So the Mezzaluna comes in a variety of sizes. There's a small, medium, large, and an extra large. This one is, as I said, this one's a combination of hairs in it. There's natural and synthetic in this one, in that Mezzaluna. So you're going to get... A different texture this one is a synthetic and it's super soft so this one gives you those nice soft delicate looking highlights and this one will give you that nice dry more coarse highlights I love these things but I love textures so those are the two brushes um, this is the same brush this is a dome blender again this is the number six in the 200 series not seeing Sheila's question. I may have missed it because my, my feet only goes back so far. Ah, okay. So if you have a question, Sheila, just reiterate, please. Yeah. A lot I, of questions. I love. just love this thing. Uh, big capital letters. Can you show? Oh, yeah, that was Faye Reed. Yep. Do you have the eraser on your website? These, yes, and we have the refills as well. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out, um, I just placed another order for these. We don't have a whole lot of these left. The monograph pencils, oh, love this thing. Um, the one thing we did not have was the eraser replacements, and we have those ordered. So we have more pencils coming, and then I also ordered the replacement for the erasers. Oh, okay. This is just a fabulous pencil. It was the dome brushes. Yeah. That's what the question was. About seeing it closer. So, yeah, we have the knock erasers on the website. We have them in two colors. We have the blue and we have the green. Um, the erasers the same, just people have preferences. And then we have the refills for these. Um, I have a few of these left. I love this this pencil. This is a mechanical pencil from Tombow. It just It's an absolutely beautiful pencil for designing. I've been working with this for quite some time and uh, they're just remarkable. I love this, that that eraser, you just twist the top and the eraser extends out. You can pull it out and then easily replace it and then just go back. 
and you can tuck it away when you don't need it and open it back up when you do. These are just sensational. They're slightly weighted. They're very comfortable in the hand. Your hand does not get tired working with these. I just love these pencils. And then that knock eraser. This thing is just flipping awesome. If you have a nail file, oh, this was the coolest trick I learned. If you have a nail file, you can literally just turn this until you get a point. You can sharpen your eraser. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a nice sharp point so you can get into all of those little tight spaces to get at that graphite without, you know, rubbing over everything. I am a huge fan of my uh, Factus black eraser for working on black surfaces. Huge, huge, huge fan. Love these erasers. And they're fantastic, especially when you have large areas to remove. It doesn't damage the paint, doesn't damage the, um, like doesn't polish the background, especially on dark colors. Absolutely phenomenal. For detail work, getting little fine areas that you need to clean up. This thing is fantastic. I've just, I'm <laughs> so in love with this pencil eraser. And then, uh, Does the pencil come with white lead? not but it will fit standard well there you go yeah so you could put white lead in it easily so this is a factus black well loved obviously this is what they look like new <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> just so you know what you're looking for but uh this highly recommend for removing graphite lines and pencil lines from painted surfaces because it does not polish the paint and it works particularly well on dark surfaces because it doesn't polish the paint so if you're looking for one of those, it's a Factus Black Eraser. These you can get at Hobby Lobby. You can get those at Michael's. You can get them at most stationery stores and art stores. They are made by General Pencil. Phenomenal eraser. And this is my new love. I just love this thing. I think they're fantastic. It's when you find something that really works, you know. Uh, Mary is asking if you could show how to work the dry brush on paper towel with a darker color. Absolutely. So they could see how it works. Absolutely. Worked. I can do that. I'll grab some paper towel. Uh, how do I get the this version of the pattern? I have the first one. Oh, it's just a line drawing. I'll be happy to send you the line drawing if you have the original pattern. Yeah, just send her yeah, a message. Just send me a message. I'm happy to send you the line, the updated line drawing. Nope. Aw. That's Did cute. <laughs> kitty cats. I don't think they're the kitty cat. I think it's a fox or a Shiba Inu. A Shiba Inu? Okay. Yeah, it's a sticker. Just killer and sending us five bucks for the puppers. Yay. So month of May, uh, we sent off... Uh, what was it? Forty some dollars to our local SPCA uh, from the super chat because that's what we do with anything that goes through the super chat. It goes to our local uh, SPCA shelter. It's a no kill shelter here in town um, to help feed the puppers, provide veterinary services, etc. That's uh, we know. I don't like profiting from the super chat, so we like to send everything to the the puppers. Do you use an eraser shield? Uh, yes, actually, it depends on what I'm doing. Um, if I'm working in pencil, then I'll use uh, an eraser shield. Primarily for colored pencil, because you don't want to erase everything. Um, but when I'm working with acrylic paint, I don't want to damage my paint. I, and I want to get rid of those graphite lines, because the graphite lines will drive me nuts. Um, so these are the two tools that I use the most often. Um, these are fabulous with colored pencil because they are so small. Um, I also have a, a, a powered one, an electric one that spins, a rotary eraser. I find that one difficult to control, and which was one of the reasons that I decided to try one of these and discovered just, oh, I absolutely love this thing because I have control over it and then I can sharpen it to a point if I really want to get delicate and it also works with that eraser shield and if you're not familiar with an eraser shield it's a metal plate with openings of varying sizes much like a stencil um, that you can use you just simply place it over the surface it protects the surface from the eraser and that way you're isolated to only what you want to remove 
So it's a very handy little tool. So dry brushing with a darker color. Um, I'm going to, because I'm on paper towel, I'm going to switch to a bigger dry brush. Um, I'm going to show you both. I'm going to use uh, this larger Mezzaluna. And then I'm going to use this larger Dome Blender. Okay, before you do that, I think we should spin. Yes. We're going to use the time. So we'll do two. Paula Ransdell with $10 for the puppers. Oh, thank you, Paula. The puppers thanks you. The puppers thank you. The puppers thank you. Yeah. Not okay. the puppers. Okay. Here we go. Oh, somebody's having an issue with sharing. Let me... Let me add your name because you're since you're having an issue. You wanted to, but you couldn't. So. Oh, okay. Let me add your name. I can't see your name now. Lucinda... Aranda? Lucinda Aranda. <laughs> You're in there. Hey, boom. Hey, boom. We're spinning. Spin, 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 spin. Who do we got? Who do we got? Who do we got? Who do we got? <laughs> Who do we got? Who do we got? <laughs> See, that's what you get for donating to Peppers. Yep. Three, two, one. <laughs> Why did it do that? Why is it looping? I don't know. Why did it loop? There we go. There you go. Paula Err. Cool. Oh. <laughs> I think it's Paula Ranstall. I don't know. It might be. Cool. Uh -huh. Paula Err. Paula Err. You going to do another one? Sure. Let's spin it again. <laughs> Took his time on this one. What do we got? Denise Van Nuker. Yay, Denise! Denise was the first one on Facebook this morning. She was. <laughs> 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 All right, so we got Paula R and Denise Van Nuker. You're each getting a set of Tombow professional grade uh, drawing pencils. And uh, getting one of those fun little be kind pencil cases and a bunch of other goodies. Plus, you're getting a paint or dye ornament. <laughs> Paula, Paula she said, thank you. Shocked me. <laughs> <laughs> and we still have another one yet. So we'll do that near the end. So we're talking about uh, dry brushing. I went and grabbed a bigger dry brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of country red. Or not country red, cherry red, because it's what's on the palette. And Renee's going to switch the camera. Already done. Already done. Wait, on Okay. <laughs> so I got a little bit of red in there. And all I did was pick up a little red on there. And I scumble it on the palette until it's a little transparent. Then you can go to some paper towel. I'm using a little bit of shop towel. And I scumble the brush. So that when, say I want to do something that's got a circular shape. Then it's very light. And I'm not pressing hard. So it's a very light touch. But the brush should be just about dry. And that will give you that nice soft dry brush. Now if I were using the Mezzaluna. I have to refresh. I'm going to do the same thing. I do still scumble it on my palette a little bit. And then I blot on my paper towel. And this one is going to give me a coarser, heavier dry brush. Can you get the brushes from the brush guys? Yes, both of these are available from the brush guys. This is a number six uh, dome blender in the 200 series. And this is the Dynasty Mezzaluna dry brushes. Both of them 
are available on the brush guys. Don't forget to use that coupon code Tracy M. Give you an additional discount. So you can see the difference in the, that dry brushing just on paper towel. So one is a bit softer, more muted, and the other one is a little bit coarser and a little heavier. And that's one of the reasons that you should never have just one dry brush in your arsenal because you're going to get different effects, different looks, depending on the type of brush that you use. I really like this one. It's a little coarser and so it gives you a coarser dry brush look. And this one is a softer bristle so it gives you a softer, more muted dry brush look. So both are really great. And so, but it depends entirely on what you're doing. So if you want that soft, more blended appearance, then you go for the softer bristle. If you want something a little coarser, say you're working on something like a basket and you want a coarser texture, then that Metzaluna would be a really great brush to use for that. A boom. A boom. Dry brushes, 101. I love dry brushing and it depends, especially for winter stuff because dry brushing with warm white or with titanium white gives you a nice soft frosty look. It's cool. Hello from Wisconsin. Wisconsin? Wisconsin. <laughs> Wisconsin. <laughs> so if you have the original pattern for this, I know it, it is an older pattern, but if you have the original and you would like the, the updated line drawing, um, just send me a message uh, via the uh, website. Just click on the home page down in the lower right hand corner. There's a little speech bubble. Click on that send me a message and uh, I will be more than happy to send you the updated line drawings. Um, for those of you that don't have the pattern, it is included. Both sets of line drawings are in the pattern that is on the website right now. So yeah. Mary Galliato is on the list. Thanks. I made sure of it. <laughs> Mary never misses and she always shares. She always likes. Yeah. Um, She's having trouble sharing today for some reason. Oh, see, I, you know what? It depends on where you are. Sometimes a Facebook is just really weird lately. So I'm not going to I'm not going to paint all of these cherries today because it would just be saying the same thing over and over and over again. So if you have any questions um, about anything painting related, IPC it's that ink pastel and, and chalk and chalk they're talking about the point blender yes which is this one i love that's, that's the one you can use with makeup this is the one you can use with ink pastel chalk makeup uh you, i've used it with fluid acrylics i've floated with this one with this point blender you know float color with this point blender that must take some skill um i think it just takes practice but yeah, yeah. you can float color with it but also a really nice dry brush using that point blender again it's a very soft bristle so it'll give you that nice soft look but what i love about this is that point being able to get into little tiny spaces with it it's a great brush well, kiko's got a question okay oh uh, where can i get those little sanding blocks that you showed at the beginning <laughs> <laughs> this little thing these actually are nail files Oh. You can get these from uh, beauty supply centers. They are available on Amazon in bales. <laughs> <laughs> we literally get a package about this big. They're only about an inch and a half long. So I think there's like a hundred of them in one bag. They're fantastic. It's great for crafting, especially when you're working on small surfaces. They're ideal for little tight spots. And uh, they're great for, you know, cleaning up your manicure too. Because I'm constantly getting them. But, um, <laughs> yeah, we've been tossing them in with uh, with orders as they ship out um, as a little freebie. Because these are super handy, let me tell you. They come like this. There are a whole bunch of them all stuck together and they snap apart. They're just fabulous. But, yes, you can get them at beauty supply centers. And Amazon if you want to buy 150 of them. Uh, does the IPC, IPC brushes come with a filbert shape? Uh, no, it does not, but it does come with this. This is the oval blender or the flat blender. It is shaped, oval shaped in the ferrule, comes in three different sizes. Um, and these are phenomenal. 
because you can blend like this and create nice straight lines. This one, I guess, would be your filbert in a way because you can blend. Look at how it, when you put a little pressure on it, there's that filbert shape. And then you can blend like this. These are amazing brushes. The IPC sets come in a variety. Just if you give me a second, I'm going to pull this together for you. So, um, are we doing anything else with the. No, I think we're about done with him. Oh, yeah. No more cupcake stuff. Oh, hang on a second. I know there's another. We're going to talk about brushes. We're going to talk about brushes for a bit. Don't often get a chance to talk about brushes. Um, but I wanted to show you a couple of things. Because. Um, oh, there is. Hello. So, um, in the IPC brushes, we have three sizes in that point blender. That uh, I love these. These are phenomenal brush. Then we have these oval flat blenders in three sizes. We have large, medium, and small. These are great for a whole bunch of different things, but for blending color where you want to get in and get accuracy, phenomenal. And they work with ink. And then it has this nice fat deer foot. Great for stippling. It's, this is a great deer foot. And then we have this. This is a flat top blender. Remember those teeny tiny mops that we used to have for doing nice little rosy cheeks? Hello. Super soft. Does the most beautiful dry brushed cheeks if you want to put rosy cheeks on a snowman or a santa claus this is the brush to have this is just a phenomenal this is the medium flat top and i do believe there's a large and a small as well and these are just gorgeous and we have this it's just another blender this one it looks like what it is it looks like a large makeup brush again for doing soft soft blending on large scale surfaces this thing is phenomenal and this is also available i think it's in two sizes in the ipc brushes and then also in ipc is this fabulous thing this is a medium angled fan for doing textures christmas trees little step for doing grasses this is a phenomenal brush. These are a natural hair brush. And again, these all work with ink, pastel, and chalk, but they also work with all of your acrylics. And if you're really in a tight fit, then you can use them for your makeup. <laughs> and she has. And I have. <laughs> you know, because sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. And then there is this great little tool, which is this smudger. This is a small detail foam. I love this. Uh, but I don't use it for smudging. I use it for making berries. So just dip it in your paint, press down, give it a twist, instant berry. Nice for dip dots too. <laughs> and it's just, it's, this is a super little tool to have in your arsenal. Go and check out um, the IPC line on the brush guys. It is, there's lots of different brushes to choose from, lots of different tools. You don't need to have every single size. If you've got a couple like one of each size of the brushes, you're going to be so happy. These are super comfy to hold in your hand. Great. I love this barrel handle. This is my favorite deer foot. Is this, this bad boy in that IPC line. And those point blenders, to me, these are an absolute must. I love these brushes. So you're going to really like those. That's the IPC. And I talk about the 200 series. Remember I showed you that point blender, uh, the one that I used just a moment ago with that turquoise handle, these ones here. This is the 200 series, or it's also known as the decorator series. They also have some of the most beautiful mops in that line. And those are also available in a big, big variety of sizes, which is really nice. I do, and I love this turquoise handle. These That decorator series is just <laughs> fabulous. Can you use the same brush for acrylic and as well as pastels, or do you have to segregate them? Um, the only time I really worry about segregating something, uh, pastels are generally chalk. Here, I'm going to switch cameras here. Yeah. Uh, 
most pastels these days are generally chalk. If it's an oil pastel, that's when I concern myself with um, making sure that they're separated. Simply because if it's a water base, you can just simply clean it with a water base. If it's an oil base, it has to be cleaned with chemicals or with a solvent. So that's the only time I really worry about having anything segregated is if you're going from water base to oil base. When it comes to using them for chalk, ideally it would be great to have a set for every medium that you use, but realistically we know that's not going to happen. So if it's an oil-based product, then yes, I highly recommend having a separate set for them. <laughs> that's the only time that I really worry about that. If it's oil, then I would rather have a separate set. Linda is asking, uh, she just joined, so you... She came in mid-talk about the IPC brushes. Okay. <laughs> um, do you wet the IPC brushes? Depends on what I'm doing. If I'm going to be working with a dry, then no. If I'm going to be floating color or blending one color into another uh, wet, then yes. But uh, the nice part about the IPC brushes is that they're going to work either wet or dry. So you're going to love them. Cool. cool. What else we got here? I'm lots of <laughs> i don't mind i'm game to answer whatever questions they want yeah we're this is under two hours already oh wow okay yeah. you kind of i kind of blew through it yes <laughs> and it's not a complex piece either no 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 it's not, not a, a complex, complex piece, piece. Uh, but it's a, it's a good halloween project or you know if you just just a fun project something to sit down and paint yeah. I mean, you can do it on almost anything because you don't have to do you know the big plate Although, I love that plate. I am going to finish that one because I really love that plate. <laughs> and we thank uh, Sheila for that one. Yeah. Um, let's play a game of Q&A here. <laughs> you throw the cues, we'll try and... I'll try and answer them. <laughs> <laughs> We've got... Um, talking about surfaces. I was sitting here the other day going through surfaces. Um I tend to get very comfortable with surface. I do that, a lot of those signs and tags, simply because um, those surfaces are one, they're reasonably priced, they're affordable, they're not gonna cost you the earth. They're not super heavy, they're not difficult to find. So I try to look for surfaces that are, um, they're, that are easy for you guys to get. And so if I repeat the same surface, it, it's mainly because it's, I can guarantee that you'll be able to find them somewhere Rel with relative ease uh, that's a big reason that I go to the 8x8 eight eight canvases or the 12x12 12 12 canvases is because those are easy to find they're not a complex surface or a specialty item so I, d I try to stay away from a specialty item unless I know that I can direct you to a, a place that you can reasonably get them Jeez, so. this chat is moving too quick <laughs> I'm having a hard time keeping up here oh yeah well I got Facebook and YouTube all in one oh, feed oh no <laughs> So, yep. trying to keep up. Mine just came in the mail yesterday. Can't wait to use them. Thank you for reviewing them. Yeah. Huh? I, I'm a big She's a fan. dynasty girl. I'm a course. dynasty girl. I've been with <laughs> Dynasty Brush for 21 years now. 21 years. 21 years. So. Um, I think she likes Dynasty Brushes. You know what? I, I like what works. And when yeah. I when I get a product that the quality is consistent that becomes reliable and they're reasonably priced you get a great quality brush for the price that's what i love about these is that you get great quality brushes so i've been with dynasty for 21 years and there's a reason because they do what i expect them to do oh and they've got new brushes coming if you if you work with watercolor at all i'm gonna move that camera because it's got to here i can move it if you work with watercolor at all, or you know what, you've got to get your hands on some Kalel. Um, they have Water Lily, also a beautiful brush, but my personal favorite, I absolutely love the Kalel. I like the snap, I like the bounce in them. They have a really nice return. They come to a really great point when you're working with watercolors. They hold a ton of water, which is hugely beneficial if you're working with them. So if you're interested at all in watercolor, or if you're working with watercolor pencils, or if you're working with acrylic inks, or something like that, that you're going to be using a lot of water with, then uh, go and grab a small set of Kalel in your favorite sizes or favorite shapes. You're going to really love them. I have a set here somewhere. Um, and I love my Kalel. And I've been 
playing around with my Tombow watercolor markers. <laughs> because of course. <laughs> I just, I'm in love with the Tom. I have an, I have a full set of the Tombow colored pencils and the colors are highly specialized. They're absolutely gorgeous. I have played a little bit, but um, I'm really enjoying those. But then I can and I'm blaming Deb entirely for this because it's her fault that I have all of these Tombow pencils now, pens and markers. These <laughs> because because she's fault. yeah, it's her fault. Whenever I have fun stuff, it's her fault. <laughs> I, well, and, and Sheila's fault and Sandy's fault. Um, so GL's got a good question. Yep. Can you use an oil brush with acrylics? I don't recommend it. No. Um. No. Here's the thing. Can you use a brush that was designed for oil paints with acrylics? Absolutely. If it's been in oil paint and you've used it for oil paint, then I don't recommend it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can use almost any brush with acrylic paint. Yeah. Just like you can use almost any brush with oil paint too. The response is going to be different because brushes are made. We're all for, enablers. Yeah. Yes, we are enablers. Of course we are. <laughs> It's not hoarding if it's art supplies. Um, Lillian asks, uh, could you suggest a good brush cleaner? A good brush cleaner. I have three that I recommend <laughs> highly. <laughs> and because I have three that I recommend highly. One, uh, the Masters Brush Cleaner. Um, it's available from General Pencil. If you have any questions about that product, Kathy Hansen is the lady to talk to because she knows everything there is to know about the Master's Brush Cleaner. Um, I have some right here. Matter of fact, I keep it right on my little painting station right here. Um, this stuff, I love this because it will take dry paint out of damn near anything, including clothing. your clothing. <laughs> it, this stuff is fabulous. Um, it is going to take a little work. Don't think that it's, it's not the magic bullet. When it comes to cleaning a brush that has been stuck with dry paint on it for a while, um, there is no magic bullet. Not without ruining the brush. You can get the paint out, but you might ruin the brush at the same time. This stuff is fantastic. One, it'll take dry paint out. It'll take wet paint out. It will take old and new paint out. It will also protect your brush and it will also condition your brushes. So if you're working with a natural hair or even a synthetic, it will help work with it. So the Masters Brush cleaner the stuff is phenomenal um, I don't have a jar sitting here in front of me but Jack's studio soap if you are working with any type of paint whether it's oil acrylic uh, watercolor Jack's studio soap will clean and condition your paint it will take old paint out of your brush it will take dry paint out of your brush it will also take fresh paint out of your brush you can also use it to clean your hands and you can also use it to clean uh, paint out of your clothing works like a hot damn jack mm -hmm. studio soap it's made in canada it's absolutely phenomenal product is that the stuff that um it's ugly and brown in the jar <laughs> it's ugly and brown in the jar and it smells like it smells uh, like linseed linseed oil that's what it, it is. is it's an absolutely phenomenal brush cleaner uh, it's great in particular for large brushes that's because you can really need it in there but <laughs> it's a great 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 product and then i as always there's got to be a decorate product that I just love, and this is it right here. That's the stuff I use in my airbrushes. Yes. I do love this stuff. This works like a hot damn, too. So I cannot tell you that there's any one magic bullet, but I will tell you that there are three really great brush cleaners. The Masters, Jack Studio Soap, and Deck Wart's Brush Magic. I love, love, love all three of them there and you. use all three of them <laughs> all the time. Okay, and Paul Ranstall is asking, what is the fountain brush for? Oh, now there is a brush that I have talked about, um, and I have promised to demonstrate. You want to dem demonstrate it? Yeah, I've got to find one, though. Okay. I don't, I don't, it's not one that I keep right in front of me all the time. It's not so. one you use very often. Uh, no, but it's also, it's one of those brushes that I will go, go oh, I need that brush. i got to go get that, and I'll go dig one out because... Um, they do work really well for very s certain things, but I need to find one. You might have to go into the storeroom. I might store room. have to go into my storeroom. Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> While she's doing that, I think I'll do a giveaway. Yeah, that's a good idea.
What do you guys think? Should should we do a giveaway while she's getting a brush? I think so. So here we go. And it is updated with some new names. And we got ourselves a winner. Karen Marburg. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Correct me. I need my Sharpie. <laughs> Karen Marburg. Okay, so I went looking for a fountain brush and I found six of them. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. There we go. But we are going to have to have that down shot again. Yeah, you're going to have to move that camera in there. And I did. All right. Oh, yeah, we need the top there. Here we go. Fountain. Fountain brushes. Fountain brush. So this is a fountain brush. It's one of the smaller ones. This is a number four. Um. It looks like a cone. So it's hollow on the inside. And the bristle is mounted so that it's kind of got a twist and it goes out. Hence the name fountain. So the nifty thing about these brushes is that you can double load them. So I'm going to double load this one with red and white. So I'm going to... You should bring your palette in so they can see yeah. how, you, how you double load. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of red paint... Uh, and all I'm doing is just loading it like so. Okay. So I've got red paint on the brush. And then I'm going to put a little bit of white on one side. Just like so. So that I have just a little touch of white. And then I'm going to straight up and down. I'm going to touch the surface. And I'm going to twist. And then pull straight up. And you got a berry. And you've got an instant berry. Mm -hmm. It also will do little roses. So I can pick up a little more white. You might have to hold that up to the camera. <laughs> I'm zoomed right in. So if I were to put half and half on, it literally makes little rosebuds. Just like so. So you can do little instant berries. The other neat thing about this brush is because you can also do this. Press down. I've got it double loaded. So I press down on the side so I can create petals. And then I'll pick up a little more white and alternate them back and forth. Kind of like a brick pattern. And then I can change the color. <laughs> I'm going to pick up a little bit of green. It should be yellow, I think, but a little bit of green will do. And a little bit of white. And then I can just tap and twist in the center. We'll do those little flowers. So this is a really fun brush to work with. I'm using a very small one. Obviously, with a larger one, it's a little bit easier. But um, just because somebody had the audacity to ask me to show them how to use that fountain brush, I think we should give away three fountain brushes. What do you think? Sure. Okay. So we're going to give away three Dynasty fountain brushes. These are number fours. So Renee is going to uh, load up that wheel and draw three names real quick for that. Okay. Here we go. Three fountain brush. Well, the previous winner was Karen Marburg. Yay. Okay, got a few more names to put in here. Give me one second. So this, that little fountain brush is a really fun way to add berries to holly. Uh, if you're into painting rocks and things like that, it's a fast way to detail things. So you can just do real quick little rosebuds, little tiny um, flowers, all sorts of fun things. It's an easy brush to manipulate, and you usually just double load them, so they're super easy to work with. Mm 
Pen Parcher. Janice Reed. I believe you're in there. Yes, you are. Who else? He's making sure that everybody that's been trying to share on Facebook and is having trouble gets into the draw. Funny Cloak is in there. <laughs> Julie Speaks. Oh my goodness, Julie. Yes, Linda Engstrom's in there. That's good. <laughs> uh, Jessica. How did I not have you in there, Jessica? <laughs> did you not share? I've been trying to watch the um, the feed on Facebook, but my Facebook app keeps crashing. Hope I made it in. Well, guess what? You're going in now. <laughs> this is, uh... There we are. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm spinning. Okay, now I've got the app working. Hello. I'm spinning. We got a bunch of new names in there. Who do I we got? Who do we got? Who do we got? The first one is going to <gasps> Cookie Cooper. Cookie Cooper, you've got a fount number four fountain brush coming your way. And Renee is going to call two more. And. Close. Spinning again. <laughs> I need my good sharpie. Oops, my app crashed again. Of course it did. And we got <laughs> Susan Haley. Susan Haley, you've got a number four fountain coming your way too. I got the do 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 Susan Haley. Close and last one. And it is going to <laughs> Robin Ruche. Nice. So, Robin Richer, Susan Haley, and Cookie Cooper, you've all got. Um, oh, some it is Richer. Richer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you've all got. Uh, Dynasty Fountain Brushes coming your way. Thanks for um, asking a bunch of questions. I mean, feel free. If you have other questions about brushes, don't hesitate. I'm more than happy to answer them. I can. Okay. <laughs> um, the great thing about Dynasty Brush is that, um, for me anyway, is that they have such a versatile line. Uh, Dynasty Black Gold is their flagship line of brushes they're a phenomenal quality brush and they're reasonably priced which is a big deal when you're as obsessive about brushes as we generally are um the kalel line for watercolor and then when i first joined dynasty brush 20 almost 21 years ago wow <laughs> um i still can't believe that um the owner of the company at the time, his name was Frederick Mink, one of the most wonderful men I've ever known. Um, he, he welcomed me to the Dynasty family and he handed me a brush roll. And he said, I would really love it if you would play with these and then tell me what you think. And I opened it up and inside was a complete set of the most beautiful brushes I had ever seen in my life. And I went home and I played with them and I absolutely fell in love with them. And they have been my signature brush ever since. And that is the Dynasty Faux Squirrel. I absolutely love those brushes. They are my go-to for so many different things. They are a synthetic. They're what's known as a multi-diameter synthetic, meaning that they were designed specifically to mimic a natural hair. And, and they do that very, very well. 
But the benefit to them being a synthetic is that they are extremely durable. And I am still working with some of the originals from that set 21 years later. So that should tell you something about the quality of the brush. So Dynasty Black Gold, Dynasty Faux Squirrel is my absolute favorite line <laughs> of all of them. When it comes to watercolor, however, you got to get yourself some of these to try these out. These are absolutely amazing brushes. And that is the Kalel. There are huge numbers of brushes in the Dynasty line. Everything from long handle, short handle, decorative painting, glass painting. Uh, there is virtually anything that you need. They have it. Uh, Dynasty also makes some of the most exquisite cosmetic brushes you've ever seen. I have a full set of their cosmetic brushes. They're just beautiful. And they've been making cosmetic brushes for a very, very long time, and they've mm -hmm. made them for some of the world's most prestigious cosmetic companies. So they know how to make a quality brush. <laughs> so uh, if you're looking for a really great brush, go and check out the brushguys.com maureenbaker.com and if you're in Canada countrybearwood.com uh, uh, country or .com and stockade.ca they all carry dynasty brushes so go and check them out and if you're in the U.S. and uh, none of those companies are really close don't forget to check out dickblick.com because they also carry dynasty brushes so uh, they are not as difficult to get as you may think but uh, I can promise you, you're going to get a discount. So somebody uh, wanted to make you feel young. Oh, do they? Yes. Really? Uh, Kathy Rain. Okay. <laughs> uh, something to make Tracy feel young. You were born the same year as my daughter. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Oh, wow. Make you feel young. I Make me feel young. Well, thank you very much, Kathy. I appreciate that. <laughs> Some days more than others. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's it for us today. We've uh, painted and we've talked about brushes and we've giggled and laughed and uh, we've given a whole bunch of prizes away as I, I love doing that. Um, please don't forget to check out the website. Uh, we've got uh, all of the Dynasty Stencil Pro stencil brushes. Those are my favorite stencil brushes. They, they're all on sale on my website this week. And so what else is on sale? There's a bunch of stuff. But and once they're gone, they're gone. But once they're gone, they're gone. Um, and uh, we will be restocking the mechanical pencils. I have those on order. They should be here this w coming week. Oh, those are gone? Almost. I think there's only three or four left. Three. We got a pink and... <laughs> One green. Two pinks and a... Green. Green, I think. <laughs> there's not too many left. Um, and they're <laughs> phenomenal. So uh, have a look around the website. And while you're there, don't forget to go and check out the free printables. Uh, and the free patterns that are posted there as well. And don't forget when you're pa painting some of them, whether you're card making or scrapbooking or whatever you're doing with those principles, we would love to see. So don't forget to post those either on the Tracy Morrow Live uh, Facebook page or on the community tab on our YouTube channel or on my Facebook page. Please feel free to do that. Why and, not Instagram? Or on Instagram. You can do that too. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> at Tracy Morrow? Yeah, at Tracy Morrow. Yeah, just so at her it. and yeah. boom. And let me know what you're doing. We'd love to see. And uh, we have a new um, little free stencil giveaway going, starting, going out with orders starting this Monday. week, starting Monday. Uh, you're going to get that great little daisy pattern for the summer. It's a cute little stencil. And I think that that's just about it. We appreciate you so much. Thanks for coming and spending your time with us on Saturdays. We do love seeing you. Love that you come and play in my sandbox. I do love that and appreciate you. So until next Saturday, we're painting sunflowers in a teapot next Saturday on an 8 by 8 canvas. So just so you know, pattern will be up uh, Monday. Uh, a quick one for the members. The geisha is on a what? Tuesday. Tuesday. Yep. 28th, I think it is. I think it's the, it's the last Tuesday of the month. Last Tuesday of the month. And Can what size canvas is that on? It's not on a canvas. <gasps> it is on Gasp. arch panel. Arch panel. This is what my members are painting this month. I love this one. The surface is available from cdwood.com. And the item number is in your pattern. There you go. So you'll be able to find it there. We'll get it quick. Um, <laughs> yeah. Maybe you haven't ordered it. Uh, CD Wood has this surface. Um, I love this one. 
I really you haven't done a geisha in a I few years. I haven't done a geisha in a long time. And I thought this one would be fun. Um, and there's also a printable up on the on the website that, that goes with that. So go and check that out. And thank you to those who donated to the puppers. Yes. Thank you so much. We do appreciate that. And uh, I, 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 got I think that's it. I think that's it. We're done for the weekend. <laughs> All right, guys. Everybody have a great weekend. We love you. And please stay safe. Bye.